Rachel Amrena Obozege. Welcome to a new week. Now, people guessed, and it looks like they are right when they said that reactions will continue to trail the judgment of the appeal court by the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal Justices. And the latest on social media was over the weekend when finally the copies, um, certified true copies of the judgment of about eight, 789 pages made it to the social media space and their reactions already as to why um, the header to the judgment available has Tinubu Presidential Legal Team, CPLT, as you would see over here so this has caused um, reactions on the social media space with a lot of of course thoughts and perspectives but this is the, P the apc lawyers in their statement clarifying what happened that they said in fact the representative of the pdp collected the first copy that was made available by the registry on collecting our own copy we immediately scanned and watermarked with the inscription Tinubu Presidential Legal Team, TPLT, before circulating the scanned soft copies to the lawyers in our team. So for PDP, this is what, for APC rather, this is what happened. And then for PDP now, a statement of theirs says, in the course of delivering its judgment, the PEPC had spoken of the petition it was ruling upon in a vexatious and denigrating language as if it was a crime to bring a case of electoral banditry before the court. It further said that, um, however, unfolding development after the court's ruling elicits suspicions about whether or not the Tinubu legal team provided clerical services to the PEPC. He further said we need to restate that the Tinubu presidential legal team on the top left-hand corner of all the 798 pages is neither a monochrome nor a metadata. And they are saying that the presidential election petition court must, on its honor, if indeed it still has any, clarify why the court chose to put the header of the Tinubu legal team on a CTC copy of its judgment document, while the only emblem that should have been on the document is the stamp of the Court of Appeal of Nigeria. So this is what um, the APC and the PDP is saying, and um, the, the, the PDP is saying that the Court of Appeal must clarify why it is so. And then Chimaker says, I said that some of the languages used, the tone ETC, was very unacceptable, especially coming from justices of the Court of Appeal. We shouldn't be making excuses for bad behavior. What is terrible is terrible. For Jay, it says the Court of Appeal must offer an official explanation for this. It's obvious the losing parties will lash on this onto every conspiracy to delegitimize the government. For Kasim, it says the official PDP in Nigeria has its own copy of the judgment. They can go ahead and watermark it, Sefini. And final reaction coming from Black Code, it says, hmm, this is looking more like why they arrested that suspected guy for cyber stalking. Looking more like there is truth in the guy's alleged post. Now, just in case you were not aware, you could not relate to what this user is saying, you would see that in the next slide, a picture of Fashola and someone who is called um, Chike. So the story is that in August 5, um, he made a post, not he, his elder brother who runs um, Reportera on Twitter, or X if you prefer, made a post alleging that Fashola was drafting the judgment that will be read by the five justices of the appeal court for them and inclusive of the APC lawyers. So clearly it didn't meet um, Fashola well, who on August 10, five days after that, make sure that um, he was arrested. <coughs> So when they got to their office in Metama here in Abuja, it turned out that it was his elder brother, Unamdi Ibezim, you know, that runs the account. But his number, according to what the police is saying, is that the number that was used to register the account on social media belongs to um, Chike, the younger brother. So Chike is saying that he is not aware. The number, of course, is his business startup line, but he was not aware that his brother used it for opening any account. So for everyone who, you know, you are very careless with your phone because 
what is there. I know this is family, but yeah, it may make sense. So that's the story so far. And um, there were claims that he was unlawfully arrested, which the police has clarified, have clarified that it was legal. They had a court order to have Chike arrested so that he could provide useful information, which he has done so far, and then to help their investigation. So that's what that user was talking about. Still on the presidential election petition, but outside the court, uh, after, uh, outside the courtroom is another reaction that we will be beginning our second story. But first, we have to take the story so that you get the gist of the gist. This man that I hold in very high esteem. Anybody who knows the sociocultural interactions between the Polanis and the canaries in the north will know that I have the liberty to hold all insults at him and he will strike a beer. We are not going to retire him to Dubai or Morocco. I will retire him to Pombina. I will buy him goats, broilers and layers so that he can spend his days rearing goats and broilers. Okay, so that was the Vice President Kashim Shetima after the court affirmed their victory on Wednesday. In reaction to that video, Atiku Abubakar, through his aide, Frank Shaibu, is saying that it is laughable that Shetima, who has the most woeful governance record in Nigerian history, who could not lift the people of Boronu State from poverty, slit them from home of peace to floodgates of Boko Haram is planning on investing in Atiku. Now, that was in reaction to that you watched. Of course, Shetima went on to say that um, Atiku is an elder statesman whose experience must not be ignored, but he did not meet them well clearly. Let's see what Shaibu is saying on behalf of his principal, Atiku. Shetima was appointed as a commissioner for finance and later became governor of Brown State. Those who brought him had high expectations for him having come from the banking sector. However, rather than bring prosperity to the people of Bronu, he opened the floodgates of terror. He further says, we advise Kashim Shatima to spend the remainder of his days praying to God every day for forgiveness, for destroying the lives of the millions of people of Brown New State, rather than making dry and insipid jokes at those who have actually bettered the lives of people. And then finally, he says, we are confounded both by the weight. This is Murik now in reaction to them, uh, the, the, the Muslim organization they've reacted to, to what Shaibo is saying for Atiku. He says, we are confounded both by the weight and intensity of these allegations, particularly against a sitting vice president. They are false, malicious, odious, and insidious. They are simply lies from the pit of Jahannam. How did social media users find this? Let's see now some reactions to this. Peter says, even Shetima will be angry at any Nigerian who doesn't know. Ooh. For Chikoze, he says, it's a fact that such allegation is not seen as a big issue for someone holding a seat as high as the vice president of a country. The accuser and the accused walk freely like it's no big deal. The standards here is way below the F surface and it's crazy. Also reacting to this is Emmanuel, who clearly on the side of the vice president, reeled out his achievement in what is tagged Bronu Meter. And he says um, while he was there, he did that and yet executed more development in Bronu than Atiku and the gods of LUP did at any time in their political lives. So in one of the areas in the state, he was able to, you know, have 30,000 plus residential houses, another area to five, 11,000, 7,000, 3,000, just like that, all a defense of him. So yeah, that's been the story so far about that. And reacting finally to that is Comrade, who says Labour Party and PDP didn't add VAT to their petitions, basically because they do not have evidence. Losers are leaking their wounds. Okay, so let's see this um, video. Now, meanwhile, Shatima was in Bronu over the weekend to flag off the distribution of palliatives in Northeast. 
And while he was there, he mentioned that Boko Haram inflicted $9 billion damage on the region, with Brownu alone accounting for um, $6.8 billion of that amount. So that is what the state has lost so far to the effect of Boko Haram. And photos of wife of um, the Bochi state governor, Aisha Bala Muhammad, surfaced online over the weekend where her convoy got trapped in a muddy road on her way to commission health facility and was forced to walk. I heard that she built the facility for the people of um, Jamada village and was going to officially hand it over to the management of the state primary health care development agency for ownership and for the running of it. But the photos of the scene which had since gone viral on social media show how she found herself inside a waterlogged and inadequately maintained road rendering her SUV convoy immobile. Let's see. Daniel Rega in reaction to this says good to hear that the wife of a sitting governor is facing what the masses go through on a daily basis. If her husband Bala had done his job by fixing the bad roads she wouldn't be forced to work in mud water, which all those in power experience the same from time to time since they have the power to fix things but choose to embezzle. Also reacting is called me underscore wealth who says bad governance is a stray bullet in no day discriminate. Wow. Woo. For Grims, he says she came to commission a maternity home with no access roads leading to the hospital. How do you expect ordinary citizens to access the hospital now? Final reaction is coming from Onye Buchi who says you would think it would make them have sense, but watch and see how this experience makes her relocate to either Dubai or the UK. Well, let's see what will happen. For those asking how, you know, she expected people to access the facility, technically, it just means that they are not expected. The people in that village are not expected in the city center because I didn't know. But finally, a yet to be identified pastor has been captured in a viral video on TikTok praying for a suspected internet fraud star known as Yahoo Boy that every stubborn client of his will begin to pay immediately as his account and that of his allies will begin to receive what he called blocks of money. Those of your guys that came to celebrate with you more block to their accounts. From today, that stubborn client that refused to answer that they came to celebrate with you. Ah, I decree I'm a son of Oracle. Before now, in seven days' time, your account will be carrying the block in the name of Jesus. As I decree, so shall it be. In Jesus' powerful name, it is done with you. Me, I pray with you, I'm the servant of Oracle. Well, sincerely, God is very patient. He uses his name a lot. Um, just a reaction to that was saying that you people should thank your stars that God is a merciful God. Yes. So thank you so much for being a part of it today. That's everything on Kakaki Social this morning. Thank you so much for being a part of it. I'll see you again tomorrow. Good morning, Unkoli. Good morning, Rena, and thank you for all those developments, really. Uh, you know, I'm particularly touched by that uh, muddy road that the governor's yeah. wife had to pass through. And if only governors and those, you know, that have uh, authorities in their different capacities are mm -hmm. able to fix some of these things, then if a governor that is not...